Vehicles in platform games are quite rare, but when done, they are done really, really well and lead to some fantastic games. Now, I was looking around for a tutorial on how to do this myself, and I couldn't find one, so I thought I'd make one. So, this is what it looks like, and let's get started. So, in order to get started, we need a couple of things. First thing that we need is a left wheel. We also need a right wheel. We also need a car body. And we need some ground to drive upon. And for each of the components that we've just created, so the car body, the two wheels and the ground, we need to edit the behaviors, add a new behavior, and we need to add in the physics behavior. Now for the car body also, we also need to add in the scroll to behavior, so the camera moves with the car. Only other change that we need to make to the physics behavior is for our ground. We should just make sure that it is set to immovable, so the ground doesn't fall down and we've got some ground our vehicle can be supported upon. Next, we're gonna click on our car, right click and edit the animation. We're gonna go down to the image points and we need to add in two new image points. Image point number one is going to be for the left wheel. So roughly place it where you want your left wheel to spawn. And then we're gonna add in one final image point and you've guessed it, this is gonna be for our right wheel. So we can place that in as well. Once you're done, hit X. Now, the final thing we need to do on this screen is just insert a new object and we're just gonna grab a keyboard so we're able to control our vehicle. In terms of our event sheet, we're going to start by creating four variables. First one is going to be max speed. What is the fastest speed your car is able to move at? Second one is going to be speed. So what is the current speed of the vehicle? Obviously it's gonna start at zero because we haven't moved yet. Next is the acceleration. How fast does the car build up to that max speed? And final one is the deacceleration. How quickly does it slow down when you're not pressing anything? So with those variables in place, let's add our first event. And this is gonna be a system variable. And we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna use the on start of layout. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually weld the car wheels to the body itself. So we're gonna add an action. We'll start with the left wheel and we're gonna scroll down to you see the option, set position to another object. We're gonna select the car body and then we're gonna change the image point to image point one. We can then copy and paste this and just right click at the side and we're just gonna replace object and any mention of left wheel, we're gonna to change to right wheel. It's also important that we double click and change this from image point one to image point two and hit done. So we've got both the wheels in the correct place. Now what we need to do is actually weld the wheels to the car body. So we're gonna add an action, click on the car body, scroll down and we're looking for this option that says create revolute joint, which is just here. It's then gonna ask us which object you want to connect. So I want to connect the left wheel and I want to connect to image point one. And then just gonna copy and paste this, double click once more and we want image point two and then the right wheel. And now our wheels are welded to our vehicle. Now I actually made a mistake when I first recorded this. So as you go later through the video, you realize that this code looks slightly different to what I've got here. It's just a mistake I picked up a bit later on. And this means now when we start moving the car, the wheels will always be attached, which is really, really important. Next, we're gonna add in a new event, system, and every tick. I wanna use this to control the speed of the car. I'm gonna add an action, system, and I'm gonna set the value of speed. Now we're not actually moving the car at this stage. We're gonna do that later on by using the arrow keys. All we're doing is doing a quick check to make sure we're not going past the max speed. We'll use that using the clamp function. So clamp function says, which variable do you want to check? I want to check speed. I want to set a lower bound and an upper bound. So we're gonna say that it can't go any lower than minus max speed. So minus 2000 if it's going backwards and it can't go above the max speed. Next, we're gonna actually get the wheels to turn by whatever the speed is. So we're going to add an action onto left wheel, scroll down and we'll look for this option that says set angular velocity. And we're just gonna call this speed. And we'll do the same for the right wheel. So again, just copy and paste, right click, replace object and right wheel. So the speed is set up on the wheels. However, we're not controlling the speed yet. So let's actually introduce our keyboard now. So we're gonna add in a new event, keyboard, and we're just gonna check if a key is down. 
And we'll start by using the up arrow to move forwards and we'll use the down arrow to move backwards. Now you might be a bit concerned on why we're not using left and right. Well, we're gonna use left and right to actually steer the vehicle in the air. So you're able to turn the vehicle mid air, give you a bit more control how it lands. What we're gonna do is add an action, system, add to, I'm gonna to add to the speed by the acceleration. If you want it to accelerate faster, up the acceleration value. If you want it to accelerate slower, then lower the value. I'm gonna copy and paste this whole line of code now. I'm just gonna flip a couple of things. So instead of the up arrow, we're gonna press down arrow. And instead of adding to the speed by the acceleration, we're going to do it by minus acceleration. So we're gonna take the acceleration away. Now, final thing we're going to do before we test this is we're gonna do the deacceleration. So for this, we're gonna add an event, keyboard, and we're gonna check if key is down, and we're gonna use the up arrow and hit done. We're gonna copy and paste this to get another up arrow and just flip this to a down arrow. And then most important is we're actually just gonna right click on both of these and invert them. Simply saying you're not holding any key down, so we want to slow the vehicle down. Now slowing the vehicle down is a little bit more tricky because we don't know if they're moving forward or backwards. So we're going to right click and we're gonna add in a blank sub event. The first one is going to be system, compare variable, and we're just gonna check if the speed is greater than zero. It means they are moving to the right. If so, we're gonna add an action, system, and we're gonna make sure we're subtracting from, we're gonna subtract from speed and using deacceleration. Now the problem we've got with this is we might get to a stage where our speed is set to say 50. If we minus 100 from that, it's now minus 50. So we get into this weird sort of situation. So all we're going to do is just add another action in, system, and we're just gonna set the value of speed, and we're gonna use our clamp function again. So what we're going to say is we want to take speed, we're gonna add a comma, and we're gonna set the lower bound at this stage to zero and the upper band to max speed. This way, if it falls below zero, instead of going to minuses, it stops at zero. We can now copy and paste this and we've just got to change a couple of things. So instead of checking greater than, we'll check less than zero. And for our subtract, we can just minus deacceleration, which will add the deacceleration. This is a bit strange, but it works. And then most importantly is just changing our clamp. Instead of zero, we're gonna set this to minus max speed because that is the lower value. And this one to zero being the upper value. We're now ready to do our first test. What I've done is for my layout, I've just quickly put together a really, really short sort of track for our car to go down. So if we run it, let's see what happens. So you can see if I move forward, our car starts moving forward. As soon as I let go, it starts slowing down. I can move back as well. And now I can go down this ramp and fall and I'm on my back. So there's a couple of changes that we need to make to this to make this run a little bit better. The main thing is making it so we can tilt the car. Now, before we tilt the cars, a couple of things that I've changed that you might want to change as well. First of all, the wheels, you can actually set the collision mass to be a circle. This just means that the vehicles operate as round and not square. The other thing you might want to do is just actually go into your vehicle and maybe just edit the hitbox to be a bit more accurate. This means that you're not landing on stuff like the aerial. So it's just another way to make your game run slightly smoother. But let's get into moving the vehicle in the air. Now I'm going to admit now this is the bit of the tutorial that I'm not the most happiest with, but it works. So if you can think of some better changes, please let me know in the comments. So let's add an event to our keyboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to check if you're now holding the left and right keys to move in the air. So we'll start with the left key and then we'll just duplicate for the right. And all we're going to do is add an action to our car body. I'm going to do the exact same thing as what we've done before. I'm going to set the angle of velocity. Now, you can play around with these numbers. What I've just done is set minus 50, and then we're gonna copy and paste, and we'll set the other one to 50. So again, just change this one to 50, and also change the key from left to right. And that is it done. We can now steer the car in midair. Let's see what this looks like. So I'm moving my vehicle, and you can see I can now rotate it, I can land, and the only issue you get is you can rotate it even if you're on the ground. So you get silly stuff like this. Even though the car is flat, I can just keep turning it. So again, not the most happiest with this, but it does for now. It allows you to control the car. It allows you to go up these ramps. allows you to do a backflip if you've got your angle velocity set high enough. Mine is not. 
but it gives you an idea. So this is my very, very early prototype for a platform vehicle. Let me know if this is something you'd want to use in any of your projects. And for now, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.